all of those will come in, resources, the quality of delivery, etc., etc. It is important that you get into that routine because one of the snags that people are coming up against when it comes to the self-assessment report is they've got no evidence. We're really strong on E&D, how do you know? He's right, you know, I do know. So it is about actually looking and saying, look, we, we need to get some evidence in, in terms of how effective it is. And one of the ways of doing that is on lesson observations. You can also audit, I mean, things like materials, free of bias, I mean, you know, is the reading age wrong? I'm alarmed. You know, I, I, I throw my arms up in horror. I see things coming from Wikipedia, you know, and go, Lord. Um, you know, it's, it's a useful resource, but is it at the right reading age? Is, you know, is it at the right, are, are, the, are the diagrams over common? It, you know, people just sort of download, the internet's a fantastic tool, don't get me wrong, but it's about being selective according to people's needs. And the same with assessments, John. Met a Polish um, carpenter, lovely man, and, and, and I said, you, you know, I sat with him and I said, how, how do you find it? And he come on, you know, he's in broken English. And I said, yeah, I'm just getting on with your weight. You not seem to get much done in terms of what the teachers asked you to do. No, he said, no, he said, I'm struggling with my English. He said, it's, you know, written in you know, a bit pigeon. So I said, well, tell you what, the question says, how would you fix roof trusses to a, to a, to a, to a wall plane? So you just tell me now. You just tell me now. So he, I don't know, about five minutes, he gave me a very, very lucid, very detailed, very thorough way in which you could do it. This is the way we do it in Poland. It may not be the same in England, but this is the way we do it. I said, thank you for that. So by this time, the teacher had come over. And the teacher stood alongside me and he said, you know, thank you for that. That was, again, well done. That's a really thorough explanation of how you fix roof trusses to a wall plate. Now, for the next 10 minutes, I want you to write all that down. Then it's like, what, what the hell was the point? Here was someone who couldn't meet, you know, the expectation. Not a lot of thought given in that, was there really? And I took the teacher outside with the feedback and I said, what on earth was going on? You could see it wasn't working. Why pursue it? So it, it does go back to staff being very, very clear on what their expectation is in terms of um, delivery, support, and meeting individual needs, whatever they may be. The third point at the bottom, and this is a bugbear of mine, that um, when it comes to differentiation, when it comes to learning support, that every teacher I see, uh, when they write about differentiation, they say, uh, well, of course, some of my students are different to others. Um, some of them learn quicker than others. Uh, some have different needs. Some have different responsibilities, backgrounds, and experiences. And I put my thumb over the college logo or the provider logo, and I say, well, that applies to every group of students doing any subject in any part of the country. So what's special about this? But when support is in place, teachers are not really grasping hold of the fact that they need to adapt what they're doing about reading English, etc., and providing materials which are at a suitable and right age, and suitable in terms of expectation and outcome of performance. What's also alarming is I say to the teacher of feedback, who was the lady in your room? Because I didn't see her with the badge. And I've had teachers say, I don't know, never met her before in my life, I think she's here because you're here which again is equally alarming. So we only put support in when an inspector comes. So, you know, we're, we're not done. We soon work out that the, 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 the provider is lob someone in the room and they hope that will fool me or fool my colleagues. Okay, so equality of provision there. Um, the wider stuff there uh, is the flexibility. Flexibility is a key thing for E&D, isn't it? It's, it's whatever people's lifestyle, whether they be single parents, lone parents, they work shifts, it is, whatever their background, travelling distance, etc. Can we modify, can we adapt to meet people's needs? And for the apprenticeship and training game programme, again, I, I found a provider who was, who was actually assessing, uh, and again, they, they, um, one of the things I picked up was the same provider actually, uh, that, that, that when the, um, when the trained game students and the apprentices went to shows, so in other words, part of the equine pro uh, uh, training uh, programme, is you actually have to exhibit horses, you have to load them and unload them and you have to walk them around a ring and have them judged and all this sort of thing. I don't understand it either, but that's what they have to do. The assessor was actually going to the local shows and observing them and assessing them in a real working environment. Real working environment's a show. But what a fantastic way of doing that. You're doing it on a Saturday. Okay, they're putting their money in, doing the overtime or what have you, but that didn't disrupt the normal workings of the yard. So they didn't have to go along in the normal work, say Monday, right, I want to see your student you know, exercising and showing and loading and unloading, which would all have been done just purely to, 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 to tick boxes.
boxes. Here was a, here was a provider who said, this is a fantastic opportunity. We can beat over, goodness knows how much evidence in terms of actually going to see you all smartened up with your hair and up, not and all this sort of thing and your hat and your hat and coat and your boots all pulled up and your shine and you're unloading a horse and grooming it and all this sort of thing. And they were, they were sort of knocking over half an MVQ just at one show, which is fantastic. So it's about a flexibility, adaptability, the care side of life. You know, people work shifts. You know, are, can people be assessed at midnight when they clock onto their shift to, you know, give a bed bath to Mrs. So-and-so? It's, it's that type of flexibility that, that, that meets individual needs. You shouldn't be sort of, you know, so there is that sort of moving towards that sort of 24 seven, you know, education never sleeps, assessment never sleeps approach. But it's very disappointing sometimes where learners feed back to us, and candidates feed back and they say, well, yeah, the trouble is I've got to get the assessment done between nine and five because my assessor won't come out. And of course I'm in catering, so a lot of the stuff I do is evening shift and they won't come out and assess me doing it. And it's part of that. So those sorts of things have to be taken into account. Individual care and support on the bottom there, very much about setting targets which are realistic to the individual. Um, and this is surely where we're looking at the young person in the round, student in the round, older person, whatever it may be. But actually looking and saying, what do we need to do to remove barriers for you? Um, it may be time, it may be constraint, it may be, as I say, working shifts or whatever, but it's very important that, that the individual care and support is exactly that. When I do learn, you know, when I do college support or working with workplace team or trying to gain teams, I said, remember the trick is in the title. It's an individual <coughs> training plan. Yours are neither plans, they don't associate with training, nor are the individual. So what on earth was that all about? You rather wasted a lot of time there. It is about actually, you know, focusing and adapting and saying, for this candidate, these are the barriers, these are, you know, and to just keep chanting, carry on completing your portfolio or please keep collating evidence and don't forget to do this down the other. They're not particularly helpful in, in steering people through what is a, a, a very lengthy process. Okay, I'm just conscious of time and I want to give you enough time to, to, to come back at me and shoot me down in flames on you. It's only taking me out. Anyway. Much of what we've got here is about the voice. Leadership and management is about the voice. Trick number 480, whatever it is, I'll sit a group of students down and I'll say, have you been consulted in terms of your opinion of how your course is running, how the provider operates? They say, yeah, we do that, we do that. How many times, well, we have, we have, yeah, we have one at the start, and then we have, well, we have one in November, and another one at Christmas, and, and we've got, oh, we've got a forum, forum we go to, one of us represents. Great, says I, that's fantastic. <clears throat> Off the top of your head, can anybody think of anything that's changed in the light of actually doing all these forums and filling in the evaluations and they go change and I said what are you doing it for then if there's you know anything at all anything give me nothing and that's where people start to scratch their heads so we have all this in place we have all this advocacy in place but when push comes to shove no one actually goes back and says we can we can change the world here <coughs> where it really works is you know students can say I got one I got one in, 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 the, in the classroom, we have plastic chairs and we, we've got to sit on them for about an hour at a time and we complain about them, we've got a nice couple of That's good enough for me. As an inspector, changing the furniture, that'll do me. You've asked someone what they like and dislike, you listen to it, you've fed back, and spent a few bob, got some nice comfy chairs and the students were happy. That, I'm not asking for, for, for a cure for cancer, but it's very difficult sometimes to actually get students to recognise that this is done for some sort of <coughs> process. And indeed, providers who tell me that, yeah, 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 we, we've got the audit trail. Martin, yeah, we've got three surveys done. Tick the box. We have a monthly forum meeting. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. And I ask the same question, so what? And that again is that mantra that you as providers, to head off inspectors, keep, keep thinking, we do this, what does it do? And if you don't do anything, why are we doing it? Bit of, a, bit of an odd culture for an inspector to come up with, but that's really what you have to think about. Again, it goes back into the whole thing about training and, you know, when you go back and, and, and prepare for greatness in terms of going back to your own institutions, it is very much about looking at the training that you do, you offer, and what is the follow-up, and it may well be that you need to carry on further audit, either through your lesson observations or through an, an audit paper trail, you know, where people sort of say, well, you know, I'd like to see a sample of the handouts or workbook.